Hi guys, welcome to another Touch of Film. Um, this week, well, this video, let's just say, um, is a video I've wanted to do for quite a while. It's a marathon, so this is a marathon video of um, a set of films which I've been, I absolutely love um, by a director who is one of the greatest. Um, it is Kinji Fukusaku's Battle Without Honor. Um, this is the complete collection I'm going to go through each of the videos and sort of like a, more of a vlog about it. Um, so what I'm going to do is start off by doing an intro, watching the films and then giving my thoughts on the films after. Um, I know Ryan, uh, Luke sorry from uh, uh, Razor Wire Reviews, he done this for um, the Lone, uh, Lone Wolf. Uh, and Cub series, so I really wanted to do it after watching that and doing my uh, 24 hour movie marathon. I really wanted to do this, and yeah, here it is, guys. Um, we're starting off with the first movie, which is Battles Without Honor and Humanity. Um, yeah, I'm gonna watch this now and give my thoughts on it after. See you in a bit. <laughs> Welcome back guys and I've just finished watching Battles Without Honor and Humanity, the first in the Battles Without Honor series. Um, absolutely amazing, breathtaking movie. Um, just a brief plot uh, synopsis, it's about a character named um, Shozo Hirono, uh, played by Bunta Sugawara. Um, I've mentioned him before, he's in Cops vs uh, Fugs. Um, just a fantastic actor, real great screen presence. Um, he's one of the best from that period uh, in the nineteen seventies. Um, a real like man's man. Um, he plays a sort of like an ex soldier. He is an ex soldier living in Hiroshima um, just after the Second World War, and it's like a lot of poverty there at the moment, and one of his friends uh, gets injured in a fight with a Yakuza so he goes out to get revenge and he kills uh, the guy who uh, hurt his friend uh, this leads him to going into prison where he meets a member of the Yakuza from the Doi family uh, they build this big relationship, big friendship um, they help each other to get out of prison and from there, um, when they when they when uh, uh, Shozu comes out of prison, he forms a family, uh, a yakuza family with um, uh, an, with the with another with like a boss, uh, the uh, Yamamura Yamamori family, and it's really like the rise of this family. Um, sort of like their infighting um, between themselves as well as their, their rivalry with other gangs and this leads to him to that family getting into another rivalry with the Doi family which uh, shows a, has like sort of like a, a slight relationship with um, this leads this there's a lot of how can I say a lot of stuff that goes on in this um, shows a has like an immense um, respect for his boss and this leads him to going into war with the Doi family. Uh, this puts him back in prison and whilst he's in prison uh, Yam the Yamamori family just going to war with each other. Um, so just a brief, brief plot there um, but it, it's absolutely well done. It's like the every death scene, the the name of the characters come up is absolutely brilliant. Done in a documentary style, so you do get a lot of um, it, every single death is documented, as well as like a a voiceover telling you what's going on. And it starts from like the nineteen forties till the mid nineteen fifties, and so you've got that ten years spanning of this family, the rise and fall of it and at the same time uh, Shozo's 
uh, relationship with the Yakuza, uh, how much he, his respect for the Yakuza, just he loses his respect for it as well as like his loyalty is always there whilst losing respect. Um, brilliantly told by a, uh, by the greatest, one of the greatest directors, uh, Fukusaku, who I think uh, is a director that we miss today. His films have always been superb, um, from the work he's done with uh, Sonny Chiba and Dobu and Cop and uh, Cops vs. Uh, Fugs, and one of his greatest masterpieces, Battle Royale. Um, but this film is so gritty. It's so. It's almost like Goodfellas. I know it's been compared to Godfather, but I see it more of a comparison with Goodfellas. It's it's got that rawness rather than like that glossy feel that Godfather had. Um, but yeah, really good movie. Um, this is available still on Arrow. I don't know if the box set is still available, but this is as a separate edition. So I highly recommend it, guys. And I'll see you back in a minute when I work on the next uh, instalment of the Bat Battles Without Honor series. See you in a bit. And we're back with the next movie in this series. Uh, this is Hiroshima Deathmatch. Uh, still with the main character in it, um, Shozo Hirono, played by uh, Bunta Sugawara. Uh, this time he is with Sunny Chiba and Mako Kaji, which if you're an Arrow collector, Mako Kaji is one of the biggest actresses from Japanese exploitation movies. Um, she was in Lady Snowblood, um, the Scorpion Prisoner movies. She's just amazing. And also Sonny Chiba, who is a legend. He's the street fighter. He's uh, Hattori Hanzo uh, from... Uh, uh, Kill Bill, he's just an amazing actor and he is in this. So I'm going to watch this now, guys, and then give you my thoughts as soon as it's finished. See you in a bit. Okay, guys, I just finished watching Hiroshima Deathmatch. Um, quite a different sort of feel to the first one, um, whilst it is. Still a Yakuza film. It's it's more about one character's role in his family. Um, uh, Sugawara's character is more of a bit part in this, whilst he'll be more of a main character throughout the whole series. Uh, this one is more about a guy called uh, Yamanaka. He's uh, it's all about his sort of rise. In the in his family, um, but he doesn't really rise. He's more like used. Um, he basically, it. But this uh, this one is set like sort of overlapping the the first movie, just slightly. I mean, uh, Yamanaka's character meets um, uh, Hirono in prison. Whilst Hirono's doing his second stint in prison, and there they sort of have like a friendship, but not a very close friendship. And um, Yamanaka, he's just comes out of prison. Um, he meets Meiko Kaji's character. Um, her, he her uncle is a, a large yakuza boss. And he goes to work for Yamanaka. Goes to work for Mikakaji's uh, uncle, and he, he sort of falls in love with her. And at the same time, Sunny Chiba's character is sort of like this hothead uh, son of a mafia boss. He's um, he's quite dirty. He's he's not a likable character. He's um, trying to. He's just trying to run the larger Yakuza out of Hiroshima whilst his family is quite small time um, and Yamanaka has a bit of a rivalry with Sunny Chiba's character um, Fukusaka did another masterpiece with this I do think it is a great movie 
Um, not as good as the first. Um, some great characters in this. Um, Sonny Chiba is, whilst he's very unlikable, he just plays it really well. He's really uh, colourful. Um, and also the way he looks is quite flamboyant for a Yakuza. Um, and Meiko Kaji is just brilliant. She gives such a great performance in this. Really emotional. Uh, she's uh, She lost her husband in this and she won't remarry unless the family of her husband uh, wants her to marry her ex-husband's brother. It's the only way she can remarry, but she obviously doesn't want to remarry him, and she falls in love with Yamanaka. Uh, yeah, just a fantastic film. Still is gritty, and still has that same style of documentary. It's not really a documentary. I know it's been um, sort of advertised as a documentary, but the only bits which are is like um, when the uh, narrator uh, documents previous movie as well as what's going on behind the scenes and the deaths and sentencing of Yakuza members um, yeah fantastic movie um, I really recommend this to anyone who wants to uh, who's into Yakuza films or if you're a fan of Sonny Chiba or Miko Kaji just two great actors um, just fantastic in this movie um, real good violent scene is um there's this fight in Yamanaka's uh, uh, family uh, hideout. They're all getting their tattoos done, and all of a sudden, um, Sonny Chiba's gang just jump in there and just tear up the place it's like a massive knife fight and gun fight. You just see samurai swords flying everywhere and blood everywhere. It's just it's sort of like the uh, initial shootout from. Um, Hard boiled, it's really similar to that. Um, yeah, and that is a uh, Hiroshima death match. Um, next one is Proxy Wars, and I'll be doing that just in a second, guys. See you in a bit. Hi, guys, uh, and we're back uh, with the third installment of the Battles um, Without Humanity, uh, on, Without Honor and Humanity series. Um, this is Proxy War. Uh, we're back with uh, Bunta Sugawara's character, uh, Hirono, playing the main character. Um, also, this film features uh, another great Japanese actor who was really big with Nikatsu, and that is uh, Akira Kobayashi. He's now introduced as, uh, in, the, in this movie, um, and you also have. Um, Takashi Kato, he's he's now in this movie as well. So I'm gonna watch this and uh, come back. Oh, and this now is we're set in the 1960s. The first one was in the 1940s, and then the second one was 1950s, and now we're into the 1960s. So each one is really like a decade within so far. Um, yeah, so let's watch this, and I'll give my thoughts on it straight after, guys. So we're back from watching Proxy Wars. <coughs> um, this one is probably the most violent one um, up to date now. Um, it's more, there is more fights going on. Um, so what's happened now? Um, uh, Bunta Sugawara's character, Hirono, is um, sort of. Um, He's just come out of prison again, um, and he's um, working with another guy called Ichimoto. Uchimoto, sorry. Um, he's trying to make a play for promotion to be the next big boss. Um, unfortunately, uh, things go wrong, and he doesn't get made boss. He, in fact, uh, goes. Um, it, the, the promotion goes to uh, uh, Hirono's boss from the first movie um, obviously Hirono's got uh, a bit of beef with him um, because of the expulsion he had from there in the first movie um, and there's just a lot of, lot of power play going on here um, there's 
two new families. You've got the Shinwa group and the Akashi group, and they're all rivals. Um, so Ushimoto, he sort of first joins the Akai group, and um, the um, the Maruaka family, Maruaka, Maruaka family, sorry, uh, joins with the um, the uh, Shinwas. So we've got like four families all like merging into two, having like a proper all-out war, but at the same time people cross-playing each other. Um, yeah, it is absolutely fantastic. This is one of my favourites of the whole series, um, and it leads on to. A more expansion in the whole world of the battles of that honor and humanity series um, there's like a lot more um, a lot more politics going on between the families um, the mafia uh, the Yakuza sorry um, yeah it is absolutely so gripping tense and it is probably more co if you've not seen any of the previous ones it's a lot more complicated to follow through um, I mean th th there is just like so much going on with the four families um, but some real iconic scenes in there um, there's one like fight scene between like a young uh, Yakuza and a uh, wrestler and it's just like an all-out fight with like a knife and he just cuts off the geezer's ear just phenomenal um, uh, the character Ushimoto he's Uchimoto so he's not very likable he's a bit of a sleaze bag um, at first he's like really close with Hirono Hirono's like is so well liked among the whole every Yakuza family um, because he's like completely loyal he's trustworthy and he's old school he's like a proper old school yakuza and he's got principles uh whilst uh, uchimoto he just like tries to gain friendship from whoever he think, feels is really powerful and that plays against him um yeah and there's and then at some point uchimoto uh, turns against uh, hirono because he feels that he didn't get his uh, promotion because of Hirono, but it's due to his, um, his, uh, you know, his willingness to just back backstab anyone just to become the boss, and it's and it doesn't go his way. Um, yeah, absolutely uh, great performances here. Uh, Bunta Sugawara is just fantastic as always. Akira Kobayashi, um, now that his character's in there. Um, really is just absolutely uh, great in this. Um, he doesn't he doesn't appear in it much, but at the end of the day, his mo his character is still alive at the end, so we will see him in sequels. Um, yeah, like I say, um, uh, Fukusaku is just phenomenal, and this series just keeps getting better and better. Um, cool guys uh, this is still available from Arrow as a single title but I wouldn't recommend it as a, just getting it as a single title I would really recommend getting the whole series uh, they are phenomenal there's, re there's region A version and region B um, and I'll see you a bit with the next one which is Police Tactics hi guys welcome back uh, we're now on the fourth um, uh, chapter of this saga it is Police Tactics um, we were left off with um, Hirono, he um, was kicked out of the Yamamori gang, that was the gang which sort of like rose to power in the last movie, um, they were the gang that he was originally in when he first got into the Yakuza, um, he's now had to uh, align himself with um, Uchimoto who he really doesn't like, he thinks he's a bit of a pussy, if I could say that word. Um, and we're going through that like where we left the war was really starting with the Akashis um, the Yamamori's um, Hirono's gang and you've also got the Shinwa uh, group so it's really starting to kick off you've got Akira Kobayashi who's sort of like rising 
to power the in the Yamamori game because um, Yamamori he's a bit of an idiot he's um, sort of like uses people to get where he wants um, and just to keep hold of his power but it's sort of crumbling from now um, so yeah let's uh, go into police tactics and I'll give you my thoughts after I've watching it So guys, I've just finished watching Police Tactics. Um, yeah, really good. Um, more, it's more of a real sequel. The only real sequel so far in the whole series. It completely carries on from the first where the war really kicked off. Um, but it really progresses and you see like true sides to some of the characters. Um, Hirono's so traditional, he's honourable, he really looks after his men and on the other side who's a complete opposite you've got Yamamori who was his ex-boss um, he's still cheating people um, uh, yeah the um, the way this is progressed in the war terms uh, the police have got more involved the um, public are getting fed up of seeing all the fights going on between the Yakuza gangs um, so they start protesting so that forces the police to start doing stuff um, to real, really start you know, cracking down on the Yakuza um, Hirono is um, imprisoned like halfway through the film so he doesn't have such a big part in this um, so you've got really more about the Memories, um, Uchimoto and the Akashis. Um, so they're really like um, the main roles in this uh, in this saga at the moment. Um, Uchimoto, he's really a bit of a turncoat using um, both sides. He's playing uh, the Yamamoris and the Akashis against each other. In some ways he's... Uh, he would grasp the Akashis up if they're about to do an attack um, so which leads to some of his men dying he, um, yeah absolutely fantastic this uh, this um, episode is a lot it's, it's, it's probably just as violent as the last one um, yeah absolutely phenomenal um, I really recommend this guys um, like I keep saying these are all available uh, individually um, I don't know if the box set is still available um, but yeah that is police tactics um, the next on the list is the final um, and that is coming up now um, yeah we are on the final episode of um, the battles of that honor um, the last in the the saga um, I've really enjoyed watching these they are absolutely phenomenal movies um, I've seen them before but to watch them all together in nearly one week is just amazing um, I've done it really because you know the new ones coming out I really enjoy these movies and yeah build it just build the excitement for the new ones Anyway, the final episode, um, this got pretty much an all-star cast. It's got Hiroki Matsukata, Akira Kobayashi, J Joe Shishido, um, and Bunta Sugawara, who's been in throughout the whole film. Um, so you've got like some of the classic Nikatsu stars, like the, the Akira Kobayashi and Joe Shishido. Um, I really love these movies. Um, yeah, really great to see can't wait to watch this um, we're still in the 1960s with this uh, we're in 1966 uh, where we left off um, uh, Hirono was in um, prison still uh, along with uh, Kira Kobayashi's character he just went in at the same time and yeah can't wait to put this on I'm going to put this on now and give you my thoughts straight after Hi oh guys, so I'm back from watching the final episode. Um, what a great ending. Um, some of the performances were absolutely spectacular. Um, in 
like especially uh, uh, Mitsukatas and uh, uh, Shishudo, they they were just phenomenal, uh, proper hot heads. Um, at the beginning, they start off of, as rivals and then become like allies. Um, yeah, this great scene where they um, uh, do a um, ceremony where they drink together uh, to become like brothers, uh, and it's like usually done with sake, but um, they were doing it with whiskey, and it's just like completely out of like ceremony. But just like phenomenally done, it is such a great scene. Um, Joe Shishodo is just phenomenal in this, and he's like a great, dope, great actor, and he was just absolute brilliant in this. And Fukusaku has just directed them so perfectly. Um, I just got no fault with any of the performances. Um, Sugawara is hardly in the film, I mean, he's in prison for pretty much um, two thirds of the film. Um, when he does come out, he doesn't do much, um, but obviously he's our main character throughout the whole story. The story revolves around him, but still, um, I think he gives a great performance as well. And uh, Kobayashi, he gives some really touching scenes as well. Um, yeah, anything else? Yeah, um, Kenya Kitoji. Um, he was in the second one, he plays a different character in this. He plays Matsumura, who now becomes like a boss of um, uh, Kobayashi's um, group. He's sort of like, they become more legitimate. They've stopped being more of a Yakuza, more of a political party. And he's going down that route of being more, you know, uh, let's say more legal uh, in some ways, yeah. so. He gives a great performance as well, very touching as well. Um, what can I say about this whole series? It is phenomenal. Um, I was talking to someone just the other day about it, saying, oh, I'm watching all the movies like, this whole week, and he was saying how there was so many comparisons with Godfather, um, just like how um, Sugawara's character is sort of like the uh, Michael of Godfather, the first scene that we see them in, they're both in military uh, uniforms, they're both eating in public areas, that's like the first thing, I mean it's, it's maybe it's just a coincidence but um, they're both our main characters and the story just evolves around them, even like they may not be the main emphasis of the film, uh, they are, the, the world revolves around them. Um, also you've got your uh, Sonny's, your character of Sonny's which um, you had Sonny Chiba sort of play him as Otomo, Otomo's son in the second one, yeah the second one or the third one I can't remember yet and he was the second one and also with um, Shishido playing that character sort of in the, in this final episode um, yeah, that just another great performance there. Um, I can't really rank them in any way because I think they're just brilliantly done. They they're all so great. Um, really enjoyed watching them this week. Uh, I have not seen them in ages, and just to revisit them all in one go was just phenomenal. Um, and I just can't wait for new new battles of that honor to come out uh, this month, which I will be getting I pre-ordered it um, on day one it's just I just want every uh, Fukusaku release on Blu-ray I think he's one of the greatest directors of all time and one of the best just he's just, he is one of the greatest directors of all time Battle Royale uh, Doberman Cop uh, Cops and Fugs Tora uh, uh, Tora Tora I think he's just brilliant um, yeah and I'm looking forward to that guys so thank you very much for watching I know it's a long video but uh, yeah let me know what you think what's your favourite chapter from this release and I'll uh, see you next week don't forget to subscribe and like take it easy